All right, so last weekend was the National Hill Climb Championships, and obviously it's the law that I have to do an analysis video. Now, it's been a bit late because I've had some technical difficulties with my, um, I don't know, with everything, to be honest. Uh, basically, I forgot to screen board last time I did it, and then I got bored, and then I made some other videos. But anyway, here we are. Tom Bell, we're gonna, he won it. We're going to do that first. Then we're going to move over to Beecher, who also won. I did predict Tom Bell. I didn't predict Beecher, but we'll get into some numbers in a minute. So Tom Bell... Uh, did an outrageous ride, got the course record, bin feather by 8 seconds, it was a top quality ride. Now, let's get straight into the numbers here. So, the boy himself did about 8.6 watts per kilo for 3 minutes, which is ridiculous. Um, and I think the key thing to take from this straight away is that Tom Bell is like a cyborg, come back from the future, and told us how to do pacing. So, the key thing is that... Tom Bell, basically, did not go above 550 watts for the whole thing. And you can see, the first 12 seconds was 514 watts. Then after that, he then literally rode perfectly at 475 watts. So what you can see with this boy is that he didn't go out too hard. And almost everyone, myself included, myself very much included, went out too hard. And the key way to see this is obviously on the Strava efforts. So at the moment, we've got Andrew Feather as the reference. Um, which maybe is more interesting, but we, we can also, I guess, put Tom Bell as a reference, and then you really get to see it. So, at what, 650 metres to go, Andy Nichols is at the same time, Tom Bell is two seconds slower, Leon Wright, David Fellows a little bit worse, but the key thing you can see is that in this point, 600 metres to about 800 metres, everyone loses their time. After that, some people can keep losing time, Feather gains time, Leon Wright stays about the same. So, Having said that, though, Andrew Feather is never up by very much. So Andrew Feather was only up by two seconds. So even if he had an outrageous day, you can still assume that Tom Bell would have been very close. And we can look at Andy Nichols' um, power day in a minute, but we can look at Andrew Feather's. And if you can see, so maybe if we go back to the comparison, so we're going to go on to about 550 metres in. So um, that, I believe, should be about here. Well, 400 metres in, you can see he was doing 612 watts. So for Feather... To bin Bell, he needs to do 612 watts, which, to be fair, I have seen Andrew Feather do 600 watts-ish, but I haven't seen 612 this long. Um, So I guess the point is, is this a bad day by Andrew Feather? Potentially, I think it could be seen as a bad day because I think he has done more watts. Obviously, again, not wanting to take anything away uh, from anyone, just, you know, interesting to see. Uh, I would also say with Andrew Feather that his power data generally is like higher. So like he, if he to, for him to beat Tom Bell at eight and a half, he has to do nine. So if he's doing eight and a half, you, you obviously know he's um, not going well. So if we look at this first bit, and you can actually see the crack like just there. And he does 600 watts for the first minute and 45 seconds. So about what you'd need to win. And then you can see this part here where he just cracks 511 watts for a minute and 20 seconds. Cheerio. And that is where he lost the time. Well, we can also look at Andy Nichols as well, because Andy Nichols was even more extreme. He got, I would say, outrageously excited. Um, so if we look at this first two minutes, he did 533 watts. And this boy only weighs 59 kilos. So he's doing nine watts per kilo for, two, for the first two minutes. And you're like, fair play. Like, that is, you know, it's outrageously strong. No one can deny that. But then, as always, the crack occurs. 430 watts for the last minute. Now that, my friends, is not good, because it gets steeper and steeper. The, lo the longer the climb is. So I think, again, what we can see from the men's 100%, and there's no denying it, is that you need to save something for the end. And Tom Bell uh, did that. I would also say something else, which is equipment choice, which is rear wheel choice, which Tom Bell did. So he obviously had lightweight tub on the front and probably would have normally run a lightweight tub on the rear. However, he didn't. He ran some sort of clincher wheel. I'm not sure what wheel it was. Bike Radar have a, sort of an article about it. But it had a P0 Pirelli, but winter tyre. And obviously, the boy's a mountain biker, so understands tyre pressures. Probably didn't have too much. Maybe 50, 55 would be my prediction for his weight. But very grippy, which means he can climb out the saddle. And I think potentially um, having tyre slip really did unnerve people. And that could also be one of the reasons why people did less power at the end. Wasn't just blowing up necessarily, but also just the fact of grip. Now, we've done enough analysis of the men's. So we're going to move over to the women's. Now, the women's is a bit disappointing because none of them seem to have power data. And doing analysis with no power data is obviously makes my job significantly harder as it's very hard to compare efforts. Obviously, you can use VAM, but it's rough. But anyway, again, what we can see here is that Beecher and um, Mary Wilkinson rode a pretty consistent race. 
Uh, not really changing much. Gilly Gardner was in fourth. I don't think there, um, Rebecca Richardson had uploaded power data when I checked this before. We'll refresh and see if this is the case, um, because I'm not 100% sure. But what you will be able to see, um, yeah, so Rebecca Richardson, oh, uh, well, sorry, that's the men's. We'll go back to the women's. Rebecca Richardson didn't upload, which is a shame. Uh, so I guess the, the question is we can use some VAM calculations if we want to. Um, so if we don't look at peak power, if we look at peak VAM, uh, if you're wondering what this plugin is called, it's called Strava Source 10 out of 10 would recommend. Uh, so you can see here again, uh, the VAM here is 1800 VAM for the last bit, so 11 kilometers an hour. Uh, however, we compare the first part of the climb, uh, you know, 18k an hour and 14%, 2400 VAM. So by that definition, you would say she's gone off harder and crawled to the end just because the VAM is obviously proportional to a gradient. So the higher the gradient is, generally the VAM is higher just because air resistance is less because air resistance doesn't scale linearly. It scales to the um, cubic root of power, which therefore means that you would expect higher VAM on a given gradient for the same power. So for instance, you're doing 200 watts at 5%, your VAM, let's say, for, you know, could be about eight, 900. However, you're doing 200 watts on 20%, your VAM could be like 1400, just based on just the difference in gradients. So again, you can probably see that, Mary, Mary, uh, sorry, Beecher went out a bit too hard because you think here it's 17%, 11K an hour. Um, well, if we, again, if we look at, um, that's Francis Owen, sorry. Um, that's Eddie Gardner, sorry. Mary Wilkinson, again, we will be able to have a comparison um, and see, obviously, this bit at the end, Mary Wilkinson's two seconds down, finished strong. Again, could that just be a GPS error? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. It's always hard to tell with um, Strava without, you know, on these, some of these shorter segments, some of them, obviously, again, so we look here, the you know, when it's past last part, again, 10, uh, 10 kilometers an hour, so pretty, like, not rapid uh, in comparison to maybe the optimal pacing strategy. Um, so you can see Illy Gardner definitely paced it better in some ways, doing a 136, um, but we can go into Illy Gardner. She finished fourth. I thought she was going to win, to be honest. She said she didn't have a good day out, which I guess we can see from here because she started out with, like, this pretty similar pace. Um, but you can also see that what is interesting is that Illy Gardner did ride the last part faster than everyone else. So then that's quite weird because she went out hard, like she must have gone out like the pace she thought. Then was like, oh no, I've blown up. But actually she just like rode a decently well race. Like, so I guess the point was, is that even though Illy Gardner said she was on a bad day, still her, like everyone else went out too hard. And you might be like, oh, they won the national championship. It's like, yeah, but optimal, they went out too hard. Like you can tell because... Illy Gardner wouldn't have lost that much time. And if we look at the power data, and this is the one with power data, you can see that Illy Gardner did 360 watts. Ignore the watts per kilo, I think that's sometimes a little bit too high. Um, but like 383 watts for the first part, and then if you look at the second part, 340 watts. So Illy Gardner, like on when it's past last third, oh, to be fair, actually she did 147 as well. Um, so I think that was must have been from a different time where we had... Um, the 136 so she also did a 147 as well so you can say that like even Illy Gardner doing 20 watts lower than Winnets on like then the, the the first part sorry 50 watts lower so she did 50 watts lower than the first half in the second half and then she did the same time so if you think for her to have done the same as them she must have done, done like 412 or something so you can definitely see the pacing effort was not ideal I uh, would beat you and Mary in comparison to what they could have done um, however, obviously, still one what came first and second on the day. So in that in that one, you could potentially say there was correct pacing strategy, but I would say they definitely went out, definitely went out hard. Uh, but anyway, that is enough rambling for myself today. Uh, not really much more to add apart from well done to everyone who's won. I might try and get some interviews with Tom Bell and Beecher. We'll see. I'll send some message out. See, see what the sensations are uh, and if they actually want to chat to me which hopefully they will, but we will see. So anyway, cheers for watching, hope you did enjoy. Uh, giveaway for my headphones is continuing uh, because I haven't made a video yet. But when hill climbs end, I will sort my life out and actually give it away. So anyway, cheers for watching, see you next one.